It is uh, a pleasure and honor to have uh, the legend himself on the day that uh, we all refer to his uh, Austin 316 comment. The, the man, the legend himself, toting his broken skull beer, uh, which is available today on Steve Austin Day 316. Stone Cold Steve Austin, good to see you, sir. <laughs> good to see you again, man. How you been? Man, it's good to see you. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I'm living in years. Nevada now. Moved out of here. I, st- I still maintain a place here. Great. But all things are going great. And uh, thanks for shouting out the beer. I'm real proud of this beer. Well, we got it right there. Austin 316 Day. You know, a quick, quick bit of history. Please. I did invent Austin 316 Day. The fans did. When I cut the promo at King of the Ring in 1996, you know, I referenced Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. <laughs> You know, over the course of time, you know, just because March 16th is 316 on a yeah. number date, they said, you know, they, they kind of unofficially, officially made it my day. Yes. So thank you very much. Where's the camera? Thank you very much to the WWE Universe who have made this actually a national thing. So what better day to uh, release a brand new beer? Yeah, no, exactly. And so, again, the origin of Steve, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, you just did you just crack it open? I just cracked it open. It's, it's go time, Steve. All right. You, you want to? Go ahead and it's go time. give it a whirl right there. There you go. There's Brockman. Mm-mm-mm. What do you got? What do you got? It's fantastic. I'm not going to pour it all down my shirt like Steve used to, but. No, Whoa. that's proper response. I mean, if you're a beer lover, like like the IPA, we're still really pushing the IPA, and that's a great beer. I really kind of gravitated towards, you know, the hops. But, you know, the the people you know the people that don't really drink IPA says, man, please make a lager. Please make a lager. Mm-hmm. We listened. So we made a damn good one. And it's is it brewed right around the corner from here? El Segundo Brewing Company. Oh, Myself and the owner, Rob Croxall, hit it off a long time ago. Like two peas in a pod. You know, I don't really speak technical beer language, but yeah. I can tell you what I like. Yeah. He knows what I like, and we put this beer together, and we just love it. It's a partnership made in heaven. I love it. That's the best. Now, it, it, that's is it stone cold over there? It is. It's it? been cold. Okay, it's been good. sitting on the desk all very day, good. but it's still very yeah. cold, and it's very delicious. All right, well, with all due respect to Aikman's beer, you can remove his can from oh, yeah, Troy's we'll not here right this now. This still full. i got to finish oh, okay, this. Okay, very good. Me yeah, and Troy follow each other on the IG. I, I'll take the challenge with Troy any day of the okay. week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big fan. Troy wears... Troy, uh, uh, congrats on your beer as well. That's right. He They're came here during the Super Bowl, right? and he left us some, so Brockman's got that in front we there. empty but, cans okay. all, all over the fantastic. place. Fantastic. <laughs> Zip fantastic. And again, uh, you can get that uh, beer where, where, what, on your website or something like that? Yeah, go to Broken, Spe- go to Broken Skull Beer dot com for okay. availability near you okay. as we ramp up distribution. But we're trying to make it all across uh, America right now as we speak. Okay, I got Steve Austin right here on the Rich Eisen Show on NBC Sports on Peacock, Sirius XM, and our terrestrial radio audience is now back here uh, on uh, Steve Austin Day. The man himself, the legend with his broken skull beer, Steve Austin, here on the program. And you just mentioned moments ago the origin story of Steve Austin Day. Like, you didn't say anything to just try and create one. It just got created based on what you said back in the day. What's the, the, Give me the backstory on on you saying Austin 316. Well, what happened it? was, you know, we were it was it was a tournament style pay per view called King of the Ring. Whoever wins King of the Rings, he's going to get a little bit of a push. Sure. So, you know, they decided, you know, I was going to be the guy that's going to get that push. In the first match of that night, I was wrestling Mark Merrill. He did this kind of fancy move, and he ended up kicking me in my mouth and split my top lip wide open. Well, they'd take me to the hospital to get stitched up. So while I'm gone, getting about 14, 16 stitches in my upper lip. Yeah. Uh, Jake Roberts was, you know, he's going to be my next opponent. And he had kind of mentioned, uh, you know, that he needed God to help him through this. It's kind of a religious based promo. Mm. It's where he was, you know, at that stage in his life. Yes. As soon as I stepped out of the ambulance coming back, I just had a pair of shorts on. I had my gear on and everything. And uh, Michael Hayes comes up to me and he goes, Hey, just want to let you know when you were gone, Jake cut a relig- uh, a promo on you. I said, Well, what'd he say? And he kind of told me words to the effect of what he said. And I said, oh, as soon as he said that, Austin 316 popped into my mind because back in the day in the old football days, they always had the John 316 yeah, posters behind the field, you know, the point after or yeah. the field goal attempt, right? Yeah. And I said, oh, man, I got one for his ass. <laughs> and so I just spun that thing together, and we went out We went out there. You know, I wrestled uh, Jake. It was a short match because, he, you know, his ribs had been injured, and we didn't want to uh, injure my lip anymore. Short match, go over there to do the promo with the guy that told me about the – you know, promo, Michael Hayes, and I just let it loose. Pretty much an ad lib, one of the things when you're on the fly and just gold starts happening, right? And I said, Austin 316 says, you, I just whipped your ass. And then as I kept on, 
Vince was doing the announcing. I knew I needed a button on the end of that promo. And I something I just pulled out of thin air, I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> I just pulled out of thin air, and that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. So I got two trademarks at uh, – I would say I hit two grand slams at two at-bats at an event I was never supposed to win. So, you know, it was just something that I capitalized on. The timing was right. I was right, and I was ready. So magic happened that night. And so then it just – organically as we say right yes just gain steam where fans started making t-shirts or did w did the did the wrestling federation make the t-shirts up or? well that was a, that was a funny thing when i had come in you know mark henry uh mick foley uh, vader so many guys were starting their debut by the time i came in yeah. well i was coming in from you know a torn tricep in wcw a little bit of a stay in ecw and I didn't have a really good look. I didn't didn't have this complete package that I had, you know, now or, or today. back then. Yeah, <laughs> yes, today, Steve. So you know, I was I was sure. a ragamuffin. They yeah. didn't see no money uh, in me. And uh, one of the guys that ran a merchandise, Jimmy Miranda, a sweetheart of a guy. And I'd always, you know, be sitting in the bleachers waiting on the show to start. And I'd see Jimmy talking to everybody about the uh, shirts. And I said, Jimmy, I said, the office has ever got any T-shirt ideas for me? Nope, not yet, Stephen. <laughs> Well, hell, after that Austin 316 uh, promo, I was sitting there in the stands one day, and he goes, Jimmy came up, came up to me and he goes, Stephen, the office finally has a T-shirt. Uh, they want to do a T-shirt for you. You got any ideas? I, I'll use correct language. Yes, I sir, said, you, you got dang right I do. <laughs> I said, put a shirt, put in Austin 316 on the front, put a skull in the back, and carve in Stone Cold. I said, there's your shirt. So they produced a shirt, and it was the number one selling shirt in the history of the business. I imagine so. The ragamuffin was marketable. <laughs> <laughs> Stone Cold. The Steve best Austin. shirt of all time. Yeah. yeah. The best shirt ever. And like, which wore that shirt till it disintegrated. Yeah. I still have my original shirt that I bought in Pittsburgh's Civic Arena in 1997. I still have that shirt at home. I mean, it's it's iconic. And Rich, what Steve said about his two promos, that's like. Scoring five touchdowns in a game yeah. and throwing seven touchdowns in a game in the same game. Like, yeah. it, it, what he did yeah. in that one promo, it's legendary. It, it Do you think it changed wrestling, Steve, to be honest? Because that kind of ushered in the Attitude Era. Well, no, maybe the Attitude Era was kind of already... Nah, I've always considered, you know, people in that business to have attitudes anyway. But I guess it defined an era, and then it became that. But, you know, going back to those shirts... Uh, my niece is going to law school in New York. She just took the bar. And then uh, my uh, daughter here in L.A. was mm -hmm. shopping at these thrift shops. It's the thing to do, right? And they find these vintage shirts, and they're priced at like $265. And Come on. Like, you know, back in the day, those, those shirts are $25 shirts. And, you know, as, as like uh, Bill Murray was saying, stripes, chicks in New York are paying top dollar for this stuff. <laughs> 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 oh, hell oh, yeah. Blow rock. <laughs> I, guess <what's, laughs> I guess what's old is new again, right? I, I mean, guess. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It happens. But it's 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 amazing. It's amazing how, how things... Uh, and now you're going to go to Dallas for WrestleMania 38, home of the Dallas Cowboys, man. Yeah. Uh, on April 2nd and 3rd, that'll be seen right here on Peacock. I mean, amazing. What if I had told you back in the day you're going to be wrestling... WrestleMania 38. Steve, I told you, I mean, it's full of something. I bet, right? Yeah. But you know what? Th this opportunity comes up. Kevin Owens starts running me down and gets my attention. And you know what? It was a thing where I kind of said, you know, I'm, I'm never going to get in the ring again. Mm -hmm. And in this business, they always say, hey, never say never. And But I said I would never get in. But, you know, probably by the right person at the right time. Hell, I actually wish you to pissed me off a little sooner than it did to give me a little bit more time to prep. Because <laughs> once you go into that ring, man, that's just like stepping on a football field or, you know, onto a baseball diamond or in, onto a hockey rink. That, right. That's where business happens. And so we, we don't know what's going to escalate to. But, you know, really been working on my on my conditioning. And, you know, had it been anywhere else other than, you know, Jerry's place yeah. down there, I saw George Strait on the Cowboy Rides Away Tour, sold out 103000 and it was amazing. So it's a two-night event. You know, WWE is the biggest show of the year. I mean, uh, WrestleMania is the biggest show of the year. So to be a part of that is really special to me. And, it get, it, you know, I'm doing this for me. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have a damn blast. I'm going to have fun. And I'm, I'm going to wear these two fists out on Kevin Owens. And I'm sure he's going to get some too because he's had an amazing career. 
and I'm glad that, that he pissed me off when he did. <laughs> yeah. Why? Can I, well, can I, I'll give you a story. Yeah. A long time ago, when I was still active in the ring, I was on the road somewhere. I think we were in Canada. I was about to get on an airplane. And this kid comes up behind me. It was Kevin Owens, him mm-hmm. and another guy. He goes, hey, Stone Cold. He goes, my name is Kevin Owens. You know, I just want to know. I'm, I'm in the business a couple of years. Can you give me any advice? Mm. And he started telling me about all the offensive moves that he was doing, stuff like that. And I said, kid, I said, you need to stop doing all those crazy moves and learn how to run your mouth. He go, I said, you need to learn how to cut a promo. And Kevin Owens is a student of the game. Now he cuts one of the best promos in the business, and he got my attention with his promo. So he's a guy that's had a career that many, many uh, would love to have. He's been in it over 20 years, longer than I have. And it's going to it's going to be an interesting challenge because in my documentary a while back on A&E, I said yeah. I, as, as an active performer, you never want to come off the road because if you come off the road, you get soft. An NFL football player tells you the same thing. You go through off season, you got to get calloused up and get ready to go, right? So he's ready to go. And so I got my work cut out for for me uh, on a Saturday, April 2nd, two-night event, April 2nd, 3rd, and I'm going to be there whipping some ass. <laughs> and so when you yeah. say you're doing it for you, what do you what do you mean by that? What well, when I left, I didn't want to leave. You know, WrestleMania 19, I, you know, my neck had presented some problems. Right. And, uh, you know, after I'd gotten uh, spiked and dropped on my head back in 99, I had three, four fused up, and it was time for me to ride off in the sunset and do something else. So this, this comeback uh, means a lot to me. Uh, as I've you know been getting back in ring shape, and uh, I'm gonna go out there and uh, do the absolute best I can. But I've said this, uh, I said this on, on my biography again. I, re- I just refer back to that too many times here. But go for it. You know, m- my wife uh, knows how much I love her. My family uh, knows how much I love them. Uh, my daughters and my stepdaughter know how much I love them. But uh, professional wrestling, they call it sports entertainment these days, is the number one passion in my life. You know, I like to hunt, I like to fish, I like to ride my four wheelers. But, but the business of sports entertainment is in my blood. So to get a chance to go back on the, on the world's grandest stage and one of the greatest stadiums of all time uh, means a lot to me. So I'm, I'm doing this for the fans. I'm doing this for WWE, but I'm doing this for me, number one. Stone Cold Steve Austin here on the Rich Eisen Show on Steve Austin Day 316. Broken Skull American Lager available today. Um, uh, we have a game here, uh, Stone Cold, called Start Bench Cut, where you got to choose one. You got a bench one. You got a cut one. I've got three um, items for you, and we're gonna we're gonna run through them if you don't mind playing start bench cut with us right here. Bottom line, let's see if I got any good answers. Okay, here we go. Hit hit the drop right here, please. It's time. Start. Start now. Bench. Just sit down and be quiet. Or cut. Get up. Here we go. Start bench cut right here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Can you I gotta... use the same answer more than once? Yeah, uh, they, they're different. They're I, I think I got you'll, you. you'll 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 okay. see you'll, you'll, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> uh, you got the uh, the music at least. There we go. Stone Cold Steve Austin start bench cut. You got to start one. You got a bench coming. You got to cut one. First one is your favorite WWE segment, okay? I've got three, four right here. There's the beer bash, okay, where you drove a beer truck to the ring and you hose <laughs> down The Rock, Vince, and Shane McMahon. Number two is the grocery store fight with Booker <laughs> T, where you actually fought him in an aisle of a grocery store. The whole grocery amazing. store. The, the, the whole supermarket. The, the whole right? super- okay. yeah. uh, and then the third one is when you totally... Uh, assaulted Vince McMahon <laughs> in a hospital room bed and hit him atop the head with a bedpan where you snuck in in full hospital gown and mask I'll to take hide it your, uh, your, your identity. So you have to start one, your favorite one, bench one, which is kind of second place, and cut one. Which one? Stone Cold Steve Austin. It, that's really impossible. Well, that's, that's <laughs> I the, mean, that's the that's the one. I guess that's the whole idea of yeah. the game. You want to make it easy? Okay, I, I I gotta. What's my time limit? <laughs> 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 you want to phone a friend? You can phone a friend. I mean, all right, man. Every single one of those was a blast. I'm gonna cut. Vince McMahon in bedpan. Oh! oh. I'm, 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 look at the options you give me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You fought in the okay, supermarket then, for uh, okay, You know, going into, I think that was a go-home promo for WrestleMania 15 against yes. The Rock. Yep. Uh, you know, drive that beer truck that in there. Nice. And then the other one is raising hell in where, whatever town that was at the Green Frog grocery store doing $10,000 <laughs> with Booker T. I, I, it's hard for me to start, cut, or bench anybody. Right. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Stone Cold don't quit. 
on this one, I mean, those are those are such iconic moments to me. It's like I'd be disrespecting, you know, one of the guys by picking one over the other. Okay. The beer truck is number one. I mean, yeah. come on. You drove a beer truck. I drive, I'm trying to be humble. Here. <laughs> okay, All right, next one. We'll move on. Here's the next one. Start bench cut. I don't think it got any easier. Uh, start bench cut. You have to pick a tag team partner. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Jim Ross, Paul Heyman, or Vince McMahon? Guys, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, but I'm going with my guy, uh, Jim Ross. Paul Heyman is so instrumental in my career. Yes. If it wasn't for any of these men here, yes. I wouldn't be here. So I love them all. And you, you, Vince McMahon would never hear me say that in a million years. But I'm going to go with Jim Ross on this because he was there when I had my neck surgery. He was there to reunite myself with the company when I had parted ways due okay. to some bad booking decisions, in my opinion. So I'm going with Jim Ross. Okay, what are you you're gonna bench and cut or oh, okay, hell yeah. Put him back up there. <laughs> Put him back up there. Bench. Didn't have many steel chairs. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna bench Paul and I'm gonna cut Vince. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bottom line, because I said so. What else you got? Last one, Steve. I don't know. This this may be the toughest one of them all. And I apologize in advance. Start bench cut. Your drink of choice, beer, whiskey, or tequila. And boy, I tell you what. You guys are pulling no punches on this show. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the whiskey. Okay. Cut the whiskey. I'm gonna bench the tequila. We can start bring it back in rotation. Yes. And I'm starting the beer. Oh. Hey. It's a, it's yeah. Yes. It's called, yeah. It's called yes. promoting. You see, you do not, you will Boom. never miss an opportunity to promote. There you go. Yeah. There it is right in front of you. You know, here, we're here releasing this. I'm fixing to leave here. You flip me one over. I'll do yeah. I'm okay. leaving well, here to go nice right to the brewery because we got to. Well, I mean, it's, it's geographically sound, right? Yeah, yeah. geographically sound. You got a meet and, and greet over there, day, right? So uh, yesterday I was down there signing, pre-signing some stuff and uh, had a couple. And then... Uh, like today, I'll have a couple because, you know, it's the thing to do to party with the people that we're doing a release party with. Sure. Uh, but then it'll be back to hardcore training for WrestleMania 38 because, you know, I got a can of whoop ass. It might be the last can I have in me, but I've got one last can for Kevin Owens, and I'm going to give it to him in I like it. fine fashion. I like it. <laughs> no, get up. Cheers, sir. Cheers. Okay. Here you go. Steve, Share we were watching beer. that promo with Cheers. Coach. Here you go. The well, you got to drink up. I got to, I got to, okay. The one go. with Coach where mm. it was kind of the height of the what era too, where you're that just like, good. more yeah. beer, what, more beer, what, some tequila, what, whiskey, what, <laughs> just kind of got us fired Coach up. Coach is awesome because I was always trying to bust him. Yeah. You know, to, to <laughs> he's get, trying not to laugh the know. whole time. I know. I damn near had him a couple times, yeah. but he's such a pro. He, he was awesome. <laughs> this is really good. Yeah. Hey, man, it's good. You know, like the, the IPA, you know, I, I was Cheers, real specific TJ. on that yes, because, you know, I like different, I like something a little bit more mid-palate. I don't want to linger too long. I don't want to be too bitter. That beer was built specifically for me, and it's awesome. This awesome beer. But, it, you know, in a beer like this, you just want something you just drink a bunch of. <laughs> and this is that damn beer. I mean, because you can't drink a whole bunch of those IPAs. I mean, you can and I can, but I mean, it, it's not advisable. Yeah, not just to go drink ten not of them. But you can drink ten of these. Yeah, that was an epic start bench cut. By the way, good job, good job, TJ. Well TJ done. came up with all, all those around. runs. I can't uh, take any credit for that. I kind of, I kind of crapped the bed on the first three, well, but I mean, yeah, no, I'm better no, no, well, I mean, look, those are three of your more iconic moments. We didn't even include, obviously, you. Give, delivering the line that causes today to be Steve Austin. Day. Yeah, but those are pretty epic. Yeah, I mean, who, who helped come up with the, the the belt, Steve? The Stone Cold belt. Hey man, that, that's a great question because I was you know hanging around four shows. We're always kind of kicking it, killing time. People wonder how you kill time is telling stories. A lot of guys played cards. A lot of times I'd be hanging out with Bubba Ray or Chris Jericho talking rock and roll. But at this point in time, I was hanging out the Road Warriors and uh, Animal and Hawk. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were sitting there, and they said, God dang, I was really starting to catch on fire. And the big thing back in the day, you know, if someone really blew the roof off the joint, you say, oh, man, that was a Road Warrior pop. Mm -hmm. So Road Warriors are really over, right? And uh, they said, Steve, they said, you ought to have your own belt. You ought to have the Stone Cold belt. And I guess I ran that by Vince, but it was a Road Warriors idea to come okay. up with that belt, and we did. Whose idea was it to hit him with a bedpan? Was that just you saw No, it that was it? Vince's idea. <laughs> Vince said hit oh, me with yeah. a bedpan. Oh, yeah. Well, man, wow. that segment is so much gold in that. Me and Mick Foley are in this tiny closet while Vince is doing his stuff, and he breaks out Mr. Sacco and says that's about to be his new finish maneuver. 
And we're in there like you know, two big ass guys in a little bitty room just laughing our asses off. <laughs> and they said, hey, man, you guys got to keep it down while Vince is doing this stuff. And so when I found out I was going to hit him with that, you know, that thing is stainless steel. And so I'm bouncing it off my head, trying to get the right acoustics and try to find that sweet spot. <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> you know, when your boss says you got to lay me out, he's already laid out. But when you got to hit somebody with a bedpan and you're in the middle of a hot angle, mm. you don't want to just go, dink. <laughs> you got to rear back and bring it. Mm. So I just found the sweet spot on my head and then on the fly, you know, I'm, I'm an expert at hitting, uh, hit, hitting people with certain objects. <laughs> Yeah, and so it worked out great, and people still talk about that moment. Like us. Yeah. yeah like here on this day. All right, cheers to you. Uh, yeah, everybody, cheers, uh, man, what you said, uh, brokenskullbeer.com? Is that where yep, people get it? Yeah, brokenskullbeer.com. And uh, it is really good, man. And then, um, by the way, our kudos to our refrigerator. This thing is Absolutely. really cold, right? Ice I cold. mean, yeah. this is ice cold. It's stone yeah. cold. And I also, Rich, the, the yeah. moment Steve was talking about when it all happened, I told you earlier, that's the T-shirt I have on the day, the moment – that he's uttered those that lines is. to Michael Hayes, Doc Hendricks, who he was at the time, and wearing that today in honor of the man and drinking some beer. This is as a great Mick day. Foley said, you know, as Mick day. Foley said, he goes, you know, I could have cut that promo just like I did, and it would have been great, but the fact that I was stitched up, there's a little bit of blood in my mouth, just kind of added to the – it was an exclamation point on the promo. It certainly – Great notice by Mick Foley. <laughs> At Steve Austin BSR on Twitter and Instagram, brokenskullbeer.com. This is really good stuff. It goes down a little too easy. I've got to work out later, <laughs> to be very honest. That was the plan. And, and we will see you at WrestleMania, sir. Yeah. Good to Raising see you. Raising hell as only I can. Thanks for staying. Looking and thanks for it. coming here on your on your day. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, uh, Rich. You're you know awesome. That. And love all you guys. Thank and you. that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.